Hey everybody, we're back playing some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. It's been a minute since I did a, a live stream for this game, but uh, yeah, there's been some new uh, stuff. I mean, I got like plenty of points. Didn't buy any. Uh, some point next month, I will be buying uh, the uh, highest one. The uh, the uh, 80 dollar gem pack I'll make sure I get over at least a thousand gems so I can just just go uh, full on with a particular card so I can definitely upgrade or tweak my Zang Yugi and Kaiba decks and hopefully uh, you know get some other stuff but I definitely want to try out my uh, ancient gear cards and you know there's a bunch of stuff I want to do it's hopefully I can um, uh, get down to the nitty-gritty they also the uh, event this uh in our rarity festival deck which I set up something that should be uh, effective and I'm gonna play a little bit of that but I as promised before I want to get into these new solo stuff 40s. Yeah, I'll just do two. Well, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's two and one. Let me see something. Oh. I guess it's like. I'll say, like, is this two and one? Uh. Okay, chosen by the world legacy. Channel the world chalice with link summons that utilize normal monsters to summon more powerful monsters and face off against the crawlers using the world armor, which has a powerful effect when flipped. The battle of the world legacy begins. Ooh, there's a lot. Well, Chalice Guard Dragon. Mm. Chosen by the World Legacy. The rulers of this star were not human. That world was ruled by seven mechanical life forms known as the Mech Knights. And across the land spread their vanguard, the crawlers. These crawlers tend to swarm and destroy all human-made structures in their path. They most likely lack any emotion. Helpless before those ruthless machines, mankind had no choice but to live in hiding. Dense with thick trees, gloomy even in the daytime, a hinterland known as Forest of the Stars. Therein lies a hidden village where humans lived inconspicuously. The village was protected by a barrier that would prevent intruders from invading or even discovering it. The ritual one passed down through many generations made the barrier extremely resistant and it had never broken, not once. But even so, the villagers were suffocated by their anxieties day after day, not knowing when the great threat would come knocking at their doorstep. From within the suffocating unease of the village, there were still those determined to fend off the crawlers. Oram in Nijirisu. There was reason they fought so desperately. It was the village priestess and the younger sister of Nigrisu, Eve. From birth, the priestesses possess a divine power that synergized with their ritual wand to create barriers. 
Yi's power was the strongest the village had ever seen in its history, but it was meager compared to the frightening forces that grew stronger by the day. Her companions saw how hard she was trying to put on a brave face for the villagers, and wished they could lighten her burden even by a little. Aram and Nibidrisu and Nin Ninjirisu, along with the baby dragon Induk, crossed the barrier in hopes of slaying even just one crawler. One day Eve heard the one day Eve heard from inside the forest a faint sound like that of a human voice. Uram and Injirisu could not hear it. However, Eve proclaimed that she keeps hearing the voice. Afraid Eve would venture into the forest alone, Uram and Jirisu and the baby dragon Induk set foot inside the hinterland. Two scenarios in one, wow. And I've also been using those little colored gem things as well uh, to get like at least a third blue eyes and like another dark magician and um, uh, some cyber dragon stuff. Yes. Lead the world chalice fairy. The sun had already set, leaving only starlight to guide them. The scent of trees and soil hung in the cold air. Though her footing was unsure, Eve ventured into the forest as if she was being guided. Careful not to lose sight of her, the three looked out for crawlers as they followed her. Suddenly, with an abrupt, suddenly with an abrupt streak, Eve vanished before their eyes. Rushing to the place where they last saw, lost sight of her, they saw Eve had fallen off a low cliff. It appeared Eve had been so spellbound in the direction of the voice that she hadn't noticed there was no ground before her. The three descended the cliff and were relieved to find Eve uninjured. Before their eyes, a mysterious structure appeared. If it had been there before, they would have noticed it, but as if the structure had been there for hundreds of years, it was encased in, it was encased in trees and untwined in ivy. They nervously approached the building. The wand Eve held in her hand glowed and the building started to rumble as if in response. A mighty light radiated from the building, blowing aside the trees and cloaking everything in a blinding light. Even with their eyelids closed, the light pierced mercilessly through. The light pierced mercilessly through. When they finally opened their eyes, a fairy fluttered in the air before them. The fairy spoke to the startled party. Hi, I am Lead the World Chalice Fairy. A spirit that has been sealed inside the building that released the bright light known as the World Legacy, World Chalice. In previous times, it was her beauty, it was her duty to guide mankind, but was obstructed by Mech Knight. For many years, she had been waiting for a world hero, capable of activating the World Chalice. And that they are those world heroes. Please, lend me your strength and gather the scattered starlight and save the world from the great darkness, she spoke. 
Though bewildered by Lee's story, Elram and the group were moved by her earnestness and decided to lend a hand. Hearing their resolve, the fairy Lee smiled and bestowed upon them the powers of the Awakened World Chalice. Description the deck that teaches you the basics of world chalice and the world chalice dragon can be link summon with just one normal monster allowing you to unlock even more powerful link monsters if your opponent has monster has a monster in face down defense position you can take care of it with in Jirisu, the world chalice warrior or nobleman of cross out Okay, this is... Okay, let's try it out. I mean, I'm more curious with the Cybers deck than anything else. What makes the World Chalice deck unique? You can bring out a slew of powerful Link monsters by starting with summoning normal monsters and landing them to further link summons, leading them to further link summons. When world chalice link monsters are sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a world chalice monster to from your hand. This, al this can allow you to perform even more link summons and recover quickly from your opponent's attacks. Keep world chalice monsters ready in your hand for even more effective strategies. So you gotta have like, you know, world chalice monsters in hand at all times, if possible. Inspired by the world hero legends, he heard a boy. He heard as a boy. This crusader adds a piece to his armor from every mechastrocity he destroys. He has set out on a quest from Fairy Lee to recover the seven world legacies and save their world. With her magical staff, she can channel the living heart of her world to shield her people from mech knights that have overrun it. His battle with the Mechastrocities never seems to end, even when their force was invaded by Mechastrocities and sex. insects. He stood his ground and inspired the other defenders around him.
Mm. Let's go with Kaiba. Blue eyes is on the field, it's hard as hell to deal with.
Gonna need to do that. I guess I had to use the actual loner, but whatever. To protect humankind, accepting Lee's earnest wishes, Uram and the group promised to help her. Accompanied by Lee, the group set off to return to the village but they encountered several crawlers who blocked their way. Oram, Ningurisu, and Umduk stood before the crawlers with their new strength coursing through their bodies. As they stood between the monsters and what they set out to protect, tensions hung heavy in the air. A cold sweat dripped from Oram's chin and dampened the forest soil. As the great tension crescendoed, the party suddenly seized upon their foes, lunging towards the exoskeletons of the crawlers. Uram's sword cleaved the enemies with ease. Ingurisu, uh, Ingurisu's lance pierced nimbly, and Imduk's claws teared ferociously at their metal hides. The battle was over almost as quickly as it had started. The power of the world chalice that Lee had granted them was much greater than expected. They couldn't conceal their surprise at the world, ch at the world chalice's great power that now dwelled in their bodies. According to Lee, there are six more world legacies in the world with equal power to the world chalice. If they were to be, uh, if they were to be, if they were to be recovered, it would be possible not only to destroy the crawlers, but to destroy the mech knights who ruled the world. This information provided a great ray of hope for the village people who lived so long in the gloomy forest. Following Lee's words and the guidance of the world chalice, the young folks at the Forest of the Stars set out on a journey to seek the next world legacy. Didn't realize how this is the first time we actually deal with so many uh uh, scenarios. And so began the journey of Uram and the party in search of the world legacy. Although the party was on a mission to save the world, as their first time in the outside world, everything they saw and heard felt fresh and vivid. No matter how many crawlers would appear, Uram and his friends would fight them off and they did so for several days. How long must they have walked, with Lee, with Lee as their guide and the world chalice as their beacon, a humid wind caressed their cheeks. Before the party lay as a vast swamp, a great artifact was submerged in the muddy expanse. A giant armor lying in the bog. Kind of reminds me of uh, the situation with um, the Eternals movie. 
was one of the express purpose of this trip, the world legacy known as the World Armor. However, they found more than just the World Armor there. Not only on the surface of the armor, but also in the inside dark, on the inside dark figures swarmed. Like ants on the corpse of a dead insect, crawlers swarmed on the world armor. Their number was countless, from a red molecular monocular, from red monocular emanated as bizarre light that filled the party's field of vision. The horrific sound of the crawlers, metal highs and scraping against each other united into a thunderous acophony, as if the earth was shaking. Standing before the three were superior specimens possessing power far greater than the crawlers that had crossed their path previously. Witnessing an overwhelming sight, the party, the party decided it was reckless to try a breakthrough from the front. On Lee's suggestion, the three friends dared not engage and instead headed for the world armor.
With the world armor in front of them, Uram's party became blocked by a swarm of crawlers. No matter how many monsters they defeated, a new swarm appeared, trampling the debris of the fallen. Now divided, the party struggled. The seemingly endless battles had whittled the party's strength down to almost nothing. They were unable to advance, but retreating wasn't an option either. They had no choice but to fight until all strength was gone. Just then, as us as Aram and the party were about to collapse, we called out the we called out to them. By the defeating by defeating the superior X crawler, you should be able to halt the movements of the other crawlers. In the midst of the battle, Lee had discovered that the X crawler was the commander of the crawlers. Trusting Lee's insight, the party pierced through to uh, pierced through the seas and closed in on the X crawler. The X-Crawler resisted fiercely, but they channeled the last of their strength to defeat it. Just as the commander collapsed, the swarm of crawlers surrounding the party suddenly stopped moving. Greatly wounded, Aram and the party finally arrived under the world armor, but they were more than just crawlers there. Seven colors of light suddenly shone down from the heavens. There appeared the seven knights. The figures before them were metallic and emitted a radiant glow that enveloped their bodies in a lustrous light. The mech knights who ruled over mankind and all over the world had now descended to this very place. Aram and his friends found it difficult to, to describe the figures with mortal words and, and could only stand frozen in their otherworldly presence. Then suddenly, the Meg Knights reached their hands out silently. A mysterious energy sprung forth from their hands and begun to surround, to shroud Eve. Eve was exhausted, no, completely spent. The magical barrier provided by Eve had no resistance to the force field. They, the rest of the party desperately desperately struggled to rescue E. However, with same however, with same light from which they appeared, Eve and the seven knights vanished without a trace. Lee cautioned of the danger if Eve's wand were stolen and the other world legacies fell into the wrong hands. Oram and his comrades set out to rescue Eve and recover the next world legacy. Oh, it's continuation. Okay. I might just do these two and then um, play uh, one uh, NR Festival match. We'll continue on with uh, uh, more solo mode and uh, NR another day. Wow, that's like two duels, four scenarios. Holy crap. You know what? Just take a brief intermission and just play a little bit of NR. Because this might end up taking a while. I just want to show off what, uh, at least one match with the NR. Win or lose, I just want to show it off.
Yeah, this NR Festival is just basically you only can play using uh, cards that have like the N or the R labels on them. Wasted two year trap cards. This is used a lot. Yeah, I got nothing. I know I said I was just gonna make it one, but that was just too fast. I didn't even wasn't able to do a couple fight. I usually should play these during the daytime because if I play these late at night I'm probably getting people who are over in Japan or whomever on the other, on the other side of the world who is awake right now and like you know playing constantly
Yeah, it's like... You know. I don't know, I was kind of hoping, you know, I can still get uh, my uh, L uh, Link Cyber Dragon card, Strieger. So maybe I'll just do this match right now, then tomorrow or, or Monday, I will uh, get back to the World Legacy solo mode thing. Oh, he has a ring of discretion too. How ironic. I might not stream on Sunday. I might uh, wait till maybe Monday to get back into. Well, it all depends how I feel if I'm feeling up to playing this right away on Monday. Because more than likely, I'll. Ah, 
more than likely I will be back playing some more Borderlands uh Tiny Tina's Wonderlands uh um Monday right after work the NR festival uh, when it started it wasn't until like at least a couple of days ago when I tried it and I think I won only a couple of times with the armed dragon people lately. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Yeah, it's probably best to play online matches <clears throat> during a day sometimes because, man, people I'm deal dealing with are probably like, you know, stream players over in, you know, in like, uh, the, you know, over in the East. But, yeah. But my gems. Yeah, I got the thing. Uh, the perk, uh, not the perks, but the missions for the solo mode. Got that done. Uh, so yeah, pretty soon, uh, like maybe not next week, but maybe like the second week of April, I'll uh, buy the gems and then uh, I'll get like you know. Or like 10,000 gems to use to buy some more cards probably best to like if you want to buy gems to purchase new cards and stuff like that it's probably best to do that once a month to save yourself some coin I mean like once or tw you know uh, one uh, do it once a month or once every couple of months just to, just to save yourself some money but anyway, yeah, I will be back playing more solo mode and, you know, a match here and there for the festival. I didn't really care for the festival. It's not, you know, it's whatever with it. I just want to try it out with you guys. But anyway, I will see you guys uh, probably Monday. I'm back to playing some more of uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So uh, enjoy yourselves. I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Take care.